when I first felt it, I thought to myself, this is good. This is new. Infinite life, after all, has its drawbacks. After a lot of speculation, the confirmation that Q is dying during the most recent episode of Star Trek Picard has led us to ask the most obvious question. Why? Of course, everything we've learned about the Q up until now is that they are essentially immortal, unless they really, really want to die, or if they were being turned mortal as a punishment by the Q continuum. Red alert. Of course, our favorite Q has been down that road before. But what's happening in Picard Season 2 seems to be different. Q is different. Guinan said she felt emptiness and fear when Q finally answered her summons at the FBI office. Emptiness and fear? No, this doesn't simply seem to be something the Continuum can wave away, and it has some people speculating that perhaps the entire Continuum is dying. Q, you are not well. As usual, there seems to be more questions than answers, but after taking a deeper look into our favorite Q this season of Picard and the Q Continuum as a whole, we believe we have not only uncovered why Q is dying, but also why Picard and his crew were sent on this crazy journey in the first place. And it's a shocker, so you don't want to miss this episode. Crackbot talk. I'll be leaving now. Also, make sure you stay tuned until later in the show, where we are excited to show you why Liquid IV is going to change the way you hydrate your body. Here's the deal. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please do so now. And give us a thumbs up if you want more news about your favorite shows. Also, click the notification bell to never miss an episode. And make sure you stay tuned to the end to see how to get this awesome Star Trek Q-inspired graphic design from the amazing artists at Mixtees.com. I will not play the fool for Q's amusement! It's been a while since we've really learned anything about the Q Continuum. After initially being featured in multiple episodes of Star Trek The Next Generation, we started to get our deepest look into the continuum during Star Trek Voyager. It would seem our favorite Q took almost as much a liking to Janeway as he did Picard. What are you doing with that dog? I'm not talking about the puppy. After Voyager, we got one episode of Q in Deep Space Nine, and after Sisko punched him, well, no wonder he didn't come back. Aren't you just a little bit curious? Of course, we never saw him or any of the Continuum in Enterprise, and we got the one episode of Q in Lower Decks. The mine. Get out of here, Q! No, we are done with random stuff today! But after so many years of very little, Star Trek Discovery Season 4, Episode 5 dropped an interesting little morsel of news about the Q Continuum. Admiral Charles Vance reveals that the United Federation of Planets has had no contact with them for 600 years. The Q Continuum were considered as well, but as there has been no contact for 600 years. For those of you that don't do Discovery, we, we don't do that here. That would put last contact right around 2589, or 188 years after the events of Star Trek Picard Season 2. Is the revelation that Q is dying have something to do with the Federation losing contact over the next two centuries? Perhaps it just takes a little while for godlike entities to die out. Or perhaps it's something different. We believe the greater continuum is likely still there and kicking, even in Star Trek Discovery's future. But let's get to that in a moment. What happened? I don't understand. Yes, everything is Picard, Picard, Picard. Picard! but we need to take a deeper look at Janeway and Star Trek Voyager to get a better understanding of what is happening here. Q was a primetime trickster on The Next Generation, but it was Voyager that gave us our first real look inside the workings of the Continuum. Voyager gave us a Q suicide, a Q civil war, and even a Q offspring. And while all those things are important, it's likely a non-canonical Star Trek Voyager novel that will make Q's death possible. The Eternal Tide is a Star Trek Voyager novel by Kristen Beyer, which was published by Pocket Books in 2012. It centers around the search for Af Sarah Eden's origin and a mysterious space anomaly. But more importantly, that book reveals at least six rules that the Q must obey, with number six being don't bring the dead back to life. Apparently, the reason for this rule is because the consequences of such an action can be problematic, as not even the Q know fully what happens after death. Oh my god, you guys are so going to hell! Of course, this book is not canon, 
But remember that Star Trek Picard showrunner Terry Metalis did work on Voyager and is very familiar with the material of the show and likely any book surrounding it. So what does this have to do with Q dying in the events of Picard? We believe Q did something impetuous, out of character, and against the rules, and now the events of Picard seasons two and three are playing out and Q is paying for his actions with his life. I am death destroyer of worlds. But before we show you exactly why we believe Q is dying, let me quickly tell you why you are going to love this video sponsor, Liquid IV. Sometimes a product comes along that is so incredible, we just can't wait to tell you about it. Liquid IV is a great tasting electrolyte drink mix that hydrates faster and more efficiently than water alone. Each packet is bursting with fresh, natural flavor. It tastes so good. It's not only our optimal way to hydrate before every show, but its clean ingredients and five essential B and C vitamins have actually replaced coffee for some of our family members. Forget all those other overly sugared, underly supplemented products you've been drinking for years. Get three times the electrolytes of traditional sports drinks and actually feel hydrated with Liquid IV. The product is powered by the science of cellular transport technology and is specifically designed to enhance rapid absorption of water and other key ingredients. Liquid IV has several amazing flavors, but make sure you try one of their best sellers, Strawberry. It's amazing. All products are also available at Costco, but we'd love for you to click on the link in the description below to get 25% off your order when you use our code, the Popcast. Try our favorite flavor, Lemon Lime. We promise you won't be disappointed. Try Liquid IV today and help your body feel better faster. What have you done? Show them a world of their own making and they ask you what you've done. We believe the key to why Q is dying was given to us in the first two episodes of the season. It happens when Picard is on the bridge of the Stargazer and the Borg Queen is trying to generate more power by assimilating the Federation fleet. When she reaches 90%, Picard confirms the order to self-destruct the ship. Based on everything we know about the Borg, Picard choosing not to give her an armada is in general a good thing, but everything that happened on that bridge tells us he made the wrong decision. The Borg Queen says she wants peace. Instead of killing Starfleet personnel shooting at her, she only stuns them. This was not your typical Borg assimilation maneuver, and as impossible as it might have been for Picard to let the Queen get to 100%, that is exactly what he should have done. Computer! Activate auto destruct sequence! And instead of dying in the explosion, as he and the crew absolutely should have, Q, recognizing what was about to happen, swept in, saved Picard and his crew, and placed them in the corrupted timeline. We believe this is the reason Q is dying. He That's broke unexpected. rule number six of the continuum, don't bring the dead back to life. As tough as this is to hear, Picard and everyone on the Stargazer was supposed to die right there in 2401, but Q couldn't let it happen. The reality is, despite all of Q's tricks and trials of Picard, the truth of the matter is that he loves him. Capitaine. Oh, I've missed you. Co-showrunner Akiva Goldsman said season two of Picard would be about love stories, and there is no stronger love story than someone making the ultimate sacrifice for someone they care about. But even more than the actions, it's the words of Q that really spell this out for us. When Q sees Picard for the first time, this is a Q we've never seen before. This is an angry, serious Q, not the amiable trickster we know and love. Picard immediately blames him for what is happening, and Q turns on him. What the hell are you doing here? Show them a world of their own making, and they ask you what you've done. Picard choosing to self-destruct the ship was his choice, and now he's blaming Q when it was Q who saved him. Q finally loses his temper when Picard says he is tired of his stupid, stupid patronizing, and he slaps Picard. We believe Q is fully aware of the sacrifice he just made, and it angers him that Picard is too stupidly human to understand that what just happened was his own fault. Q tells him, And I've had enough of your obstinance, your stubbornness, your insistence on changing in all ways but the one that matters. This is not a lesson. 
It's a penance. Picard's penance is for not being evolved enough to see what the Borg Queen was really trying to do, and Q's penance for saving Picard will be his life. At the end of Q's time with Picard in the corrupt timeline, Q once again makes a point of what's happened. He tells Picard, Shall we see what else has been lost in the wake of your fear? And of course, that fear of letting the Borg Queen take control is what made Picard self-destruct the ship and land both he and Q in a place neither of them want to be. Q then says something very important. He tells Jean-Luc, Now you're welcome to remain here, in the body of a madman in the world of a madman, or atonement, maybe even forgiveness. This is interesting because Q tells Guinan it was Picard that traveled into the past, but that is exactly what Q wanted him to do here. He wants Picard to complete the journey and ultimately get back to the Stargazer, but this time, let the Borg Queen finish what she is doing. Q can then forgive him for his mistakes and perhaps not die. Q is putting an incredible amount of effort helping Picard in 2024. We have a whole theory in a recent video breaking down all three of the Picard timelines, so check that out right after this video to learn more. If you look closely at Q's words during this season, he's given some really great hints. When Guinan tells Q Picard is trapped in the past, Q says the trap is immaterial. It's the escape that counts. Q understands that they are all trapped and Picard will have to show his superior ability to work through the problem and make the correct choices to fix the timeline and perhaps even keep Q from dying. And if it comes to pass that Q chose to save Picard and break an important rule in the continuum, then it's likely only Q who is the one in dire circumstances and the rest of the continuum is fine. Perhaps the reason the Q stopped communicating with the Federation is because of this incident. And without the Q we know and love, the rest of the immortal beings of the Continuum just isn't interested in humanity any longer. Whatever the reason, we hope Q doesn't actually die during Picard Season 3. But if he does, let his last act be to bring Picard's TNG crew back to help But him. don't worry. I won't let you do this alone. What do you think? Is Q dying because he helped Picard? Do you think if Picard fixes things, Q will live on? Do you think the whole continuum is dying or is it just John Delancey's Q? Did Picard make a mistake self-destructing the Stargazer? Let's talk about it in the comments below. You think I'm dying? I prefer to believe that I am on the threshold of the unknowable. Also, check out this incredible Star Trek Q-inspired graphic design. Get 20% off your purchase by using coupon code THEPOPCAST. The link is in the description below. Who the hell are you? I am the evolution of Stardust.